Um, lab notebooks out. New blank page. Phones put away, headphones definitely out. This is uh, kind of a heavy topic. So you really need to, any kind of focus that you've been working on in class, give me your focus and attention for like 20 minutes. Well, I give you a little more information about photosynthesis than you already have. Okay? Start by going to a new blank page, write a title for reaction for photosynthesis. Okay, so anyway, what I was saying is if color is going to help you, like if you're a visual learner and having things different colors is going to help, get out different colored pens or colored pencils if you want to. So we start with a chloroplast. I strongly recommend you draw this and write down the steps. This drawing should be, I don't know, maybe full half a page, depending on the size of your handwriting. Be a big chloroplast in your notebook. Big chloroplast. Now, what I assume you know about photosynthesis is this picture. Light comes in, carbon dioxide comes in, water comes in, plant does some cool chemistry, and oxygen and sugars come out. Okay? That's what I know you guys know. And you may know it more or less than that, but that is basically what I know you know. So we're going to take this basic knowledge here and advance it a little. I'm going to tell you right now that photosynthesis is way, way more. If this seems complex by the time I'm done, this is a grossly oversimplified version. Okay, I've taken out some stuff that we don't need to worry about. I've simplified some of the steps. Plants have come up with a really neat way to take light energy and turn it into chemical energy. Okay, and so the first thing it has to do, let me get my colors here. Light has to come in. We're not going to worry about the name of this stack or anything like that. We're just going to make a point of writing down that light comes in. Okay. The other thing that comes in, we'll use blue into this stack, is water. H2O. Very important to write it as H2O because there's a chemical reaction that occurs. So step one, light enters the chloroplast. Chloroplast. The chlorophyll in the chloroplast. Chlorophyll, I spelled it right this time. Uses <coughs> light to break water. You'll want to write this down, and I'll write out a little equation for you as well. So let's use brown. So it kind of looks like this. Light plus water makes hydrogen ions, which we saw in vocabulary earlier. Makes electrons, and it makes oxygen. If you're not going to remember that H plus means hydrogen ion, then you should write that, scratch that in somewhere. Hydrogen ion. Okay? And same with E minus, electron, a negatively charged particle. These are just the ways that I write it. It's not common necessarily. And then oxygen, what did we learn in Quizlet earlier? Oxygen is what? Did anybody have that question? It's plant farts. Because oxygen is just a waste product, okay? It's really interesting that plants have no use for oxygen in their system whatsoever, at least the plants that we're talking about. So light comes in, water comes in, and it breaks it down into hydrogen ions and electrons, and out goes waste known as oxygen that I like to call plant farts. I mean, that's the best way that, for me to remember it. Like, 
you know, plants fart out oxygen and we just take it all in. Like a fresh breath of oxygen farts. Brayden, you get it. You get it. No, our burps, Farts. carbon dioxide, does not come out of the butt. <laughs> That's methane. And methane is good for some bacteria. Bacteria like methane, but mostly carbon dioxide. Our burps are good for them. Um, if you're not, just to review, the first thing that happens in photosynthesis, this is light dependent. If there's no light, nothing can happen. So light comes in, breaks apart um, water into hydrogen ions, electrons, and oxygen diffuses out of the cell, out of the chloroplast, to be used by other animals. This is how we think probably animals evolved, is because plants were around first and produced this waste product, product of oxygen. And in early atmospheres, when oxygen was starting to be available, other organisms were like, shoot, we could use this. This is cool. So it worked out really nice. From there. Hmm. Here's one of my super simple parts. We have a series of transmembrane protein channels known as the electron transport chain. Oh, I'm going to write that a different color. Now, if you're not going to remember ETC stands for electron transport chain, then you definitely should write a little note somewhere that reminds you what that part is, electron transport chain. And it's pretty self-explanatory. That's exactly what it does. It moves high-energy electrons to where they need to be and where they are most useful. Okay. Excited electrons move into electron transport chain to create hydrogen ion concentration gradient. Concentration gradient, an old term from the last unit where we're talking about diffusion. So what we're doing is moving these electrons through the electron transport chain, which causes a whole bunch of these hydrogen ions to build up on one side of a cell membrane. Okay, that's step two. Like I said earlier, light breaks down water because it needs the hydrogen ions to create a concentration gradient, and it needs the electrons to create that gradient. Excited electrons are carrying energy, and they help to move those hydrogen ions into the right place. If you have questions, now's a great time. If not, and you're done writing, just put your pencil down. Now I'll review again. Start from the beginning, over and over again. Light comes into the chloroplast. Chlorophyll is that energy pigment that uses light to break down water into hydrogen ions for the concentration gradient and electrons, which help make that concentration gradient. Now, because we've built up this hydrogen ion concentration gradient, they are going to be pumped through this really cool transmembrane protein called ATP synthase, which is, should be a vocabulary word you're somewhat familiar with. ATP synthase, synth meaning to make, ace meaning enzyme or protein. These hydrogen ions move through and out from the other side comes ATP. A whole boatload of it. ATP synthase is really, really good at its job. The movement of hydrogen ions through that causes some me mechanics to kind of grind into gear and out spits some ATP. Very, very helpful. I'm going to rewrite that so it stays inside the walls of the chloroplast. Again, it's my recommendation that you draw the picture and write the steps so that you have both. The Drawing the picture helps me to learn it, but later when I look at it, I don't have all the steps written out, so the picture doesn't make as much sense without the steps. So I would stick with doing both. ATP uses concentration gradient to make ATP. ATP. 
HB is the energy currency of the cell. It is like a fully charged battery on your phone. It allows you to make calls and text and do all these things. Same thing with ATP. It, allow, it carries energy and allows the cell to accomplish a lot of different tasks. Step one through three, if you haven't labeled it yet, are the light-dependent reactions. Nothing happens without light. Questions now. We're halfway through. If you're feeling overwhelmed and a little confused, that's normal. I don't know that any of you have ever learned this before. So it's OK to be like, holy moly, hydrogen ion concentration gradient, Ms. Lehman? Wow. Really? OK. Another opportunity for questions? OK. Moving on to the second half of photosynthesis, the other reactions that occur are in the Calvin cycle also known as dark reactions, or light independent, meaning that you don't have to have light for things to happen. Where's my black marker? OK, Whew, that was close. Look way back at my, my little plant picture. We have light has come in, water has come in, oxygen has come out. What's missing? Carbon dioxide comes in. See? Carbon dioxide comes in. We got a cool little enzyme that it enters. This enzyme has a special name, a super long, crazy name, but we're going to call it Rubisco. It's like the name for it is like super insanely long. But it's an enzyme that makes things happen. That's all we really need to know for this. Okay? Carbon dioxide comes in. The other thing that comes in is the ATP. OK, OK, OK. So ATP is used for, oops, for energy to fix carbon. Carbon dioxide, we'll say. Okay. First step of the Calvin cycle. ATP, the energy created in the first half, is used for the energy to fix carbon dioxide. And fixing carbon dioxide is just a scientific way of saying taking it from a gas and turning it into a sugar. I'm going to make these arrows actually go into Rubisco. Okay. So we're going to fix carbon dioxide by making it react with RUBP, another pre pre sugar that we do not need to worry about what it actually stands for, just RUBP. OK, carbon dioxide. I have been writing some things. Carbon dioxide reacts with RUBP to make, to form, G3P. G3P is super important to plants. That makes G3P. Okay, so in the second half, in the car Calvin cycle, the dark reactions, the light independent, carbon dioxide comes in through the stroma. ATP from the previous cycle comes in. Rubisco is an enzyme that makes all of this happen. Carbon dioxide is fixed with RUBP to make G3P. All we need to know is these abbreviations. We don't need to know at all what they stand for. You can write down, if you really want to, that G3P is a three-carbon structure, and it's the backbone of all the sugars the plant needs. So carbon dioxide comes in, is fixed to RUBP, which makes a G3P. G3P is the backbone for all the sugars a plant makes, such as cellulose. Oops. Yeah, I need to be. Um, you know what? Hang on. I'm going to write over here. I'm going to write sugar. OK, G3P makes sugars, plural. And then over here in my final step, plant uses G3P to make all kinds of sugars that it needs. Uses G3P to make cellulose, 
Cellulose is for plant structure like branches and tree trunks and uh, bark, stuff like that. Um, starch is for long-term energy storage. Glucose, short-term energy storage. And fructose. Fructose is the sugar that plants use to transport sugars to different parts of the plant, like leaves or flowers or whatever. And with that, that is as simple as I can make photosynthesis. Questions before I just review it one more time? Oh my gosh, plenty of time. Good. Okay, so again, the second half, four through six, is the Calvin cycle. If you haven't labeled that in some way, you should. I'm guessing you probably used about a page, assuming you drew the picture and wrote all the directions, all the steps. So, to review, these two parts work together. Light comes into the chloroplast, and it, the chlorophyll uses light to break down water into hydrogen ions and electrons. The electrons move into the electron transport chain to facilitate making a hydrogen ion concentration gradient on one side of the cell membrane. Because those are all concentrated on one side, they want to shoot through the ATP synthase, which activates it and makes it create ATP. That ATP then goes into uh, the Calvin cycle with CO2, where CO2 is fixed by Rubisco, fixed to RUBP to make G3P. G3P is the backbone of all sugars in the plant, such as cellulose, starch, glucose, and fructose. That's it. If you are feeling overwhelmed, I appreciate that feeling because I was there a long time ago. And now, what I'll add for all of you is if this was interesting to you in some way, I have three videos for extra credit. You can watch one. Um, if it's interesting to you and you want to add some knowledge, it adds a little complexity. I have a Khan Academy, a Bozen Biology, and the Crash Course videos. If you want to add more knowledge, then you're welcome to. I'll give you extra credit for it as well. If you're going to be absent tomorrow for perhaps a DECA trip, you definitely, definitely want to watch one of those videos. I think the Crash Course one is the most fun, um, but if you want lots of extra knowledge, Khan Academy and Bozen Biology are very serious and will give you like exactly what G3P is and what Rubisco stands for and all that. But the Crash Course one is pretty fun. What? That's three sets of extra credit if you really want to. I think that's excessive for what I'm actually going to test you on. But again, if it's something that's interesting to you, by all means, just watch the video. Don't even take notes. Just watch it. Like, I, but the notes is what's fascinating to me about photosynthesis is that I don't love studying it. It's not my most favorite. But it is really, really cool what plants have come up with to harvest light energy and make chemical energy. It's much more unique and special than what we do.